Our scout ship has returned! Great! Let's... Scout ship... Hey, get this! I was out fishing the other day, when before I knew it, I'd wound up near a Class 4 island. Once I realized what was happening, I tried to turn the ship around, but then it got dark all around me. Was it a sudden storm? I wish! It was this great monstrous bird! Damn thing had wings big enough to cover up the whole blasted sky! That... sounds like a bit of a stretch to me. You think I'm lying? Then check it out for yourself! You just might not make it back alive. A huge bird. Hmm. This island's really something. No way I'd want to go to prison here, but it'd make a great hideout. If I'm gonna be left in charge of this place, I'll turn it into the best hideout ever. You're in charge? Someone has to look after this place while you're all running around, maintaining the ships in the base, watching the Prince and Medissa, keeping Kamuana company. I'll keep this place running ship shape, so that you all can focus on looking for the Therians. But those are just odd jobs anyone can do. You're a navigator. Isn't that a waste of your talents? You dolt! These are important tasks! Someone's gotta do it! We've got another navigator, but is there anyone besides me that could handle all of this by themselves? Besides, ever since I lost my tail, my balance has been off. The seasickness is killing me! That's your story and you're sticking to it? Tell the truth. You don't want to come because you're afraid you'll be hurt again. Uh, no. That's not it at all. <laughs>
You too. Hour. So you've kept your sense of taste. In my dreams I have. Nowhere else. Does that make this a dream? It would have to be, wouldn't it? After all... I devoured you. That's right. Don't you go forgetting it. How could I ever forget it? The taste of your... How could I ever... Looks like the fog's rolling in. Yep. Eleanor, there's something I want to be sure we get perfectly clear. Um, alright. What is it? Luffy said is not your little Moloch. What? That's all you wanted to say? You realize he doesn't belong to you either, right? Indeed I do. Luffy said his own person, and not anyone else's. Y you're right. Malakim aren't just tools to be used by exorcists as they pleased. I'll be more careful not to forget that. Good, as long as we're on the same page. <laughs> Since we're on the subject of reminders, you haven't forgotten our little bet, have you, Velvet? You mean the 100 gold on whether I'd break? No. I haven't forgotten. A word of caution. People can fight against pain, but they can't fight against happiness. If you're keen on winning our bet, I'd steer clear of ill-fitting dreams. Sorry to break it to you, but all I have anymore are nightmares. The fog's cleared. Good thing we didn't wind up getting lost in it. Of course we didn't. Who do you think is running this ship? A bunch of shameless rogues who are very good at shameless roguery. Damn straight. But it's strange. These waters don't usually see much fog.
Like a castle. This used to be the base of operations for a rich trading family. When trouble came knocking, they were ready for it, to say the least. Wow! They must have had a lot of enemies. But that was a long time ago. Nowadays, it's just another town in the middle of nowhere. But even so, to us, it was the big city of our dreams. You know this area well. I grew up near here. Keep on going, and you'll run into a ball. My home village. Then... the Therian is... Yeah, somewhere in my village. Is that okay? No one will know me there. Everyone I knew, I already devoured. I just love the feel of the sun on my face. I'm glad the fog finally cleared up. For days it was so thick, you couldn't see past your own nose. We're lucky a demon didn't show up in all that fog. Hmm? Nisgan hasn't had much demon trouble to speak of. Didn't you know that? During the advent, towns all across Eastgan were attacked by demons. It was Lord Artorius who saved us. Ever since, our towns have seen almost no demon attacks. Is that true? Oh. Pardon me, Lady Exorcist, but if you're with the Abbey, surely you've heard about how things are here in Eastgand. Of course, demons are lurking about outside our towns, but for whatever reason, they don't attack us where we live. That sounds unbelievable. Everyone who visits us from abroad says the same thing, but this is neither joke nor lie. Everyone says that Lord Artorius's power lingers here, protecting our town against the demons. Whatever the reason, you're safe here. Relax, and please, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. We appreciate it. Why do demons avoid these towns?
Travelers, right? How are other towns doing? Is the demon blight as bad as they say? Demons are attacking cities all the world over, and the demon blight is spreading like wildfire! It's nuts! That's terrible! Living in this town, I almost forgot about the demons. There hasn't been a case of demon blight here since the advent. Nothing much has changed over the past three years. Yeah, 
This town's the same as it's always been. You've been here before? Many times. Really now? Wait, there is something that changed. The prickle bore meat. The prickle bore meat? Yep, it's gotten much easier to get your hands on high quality, tasty meat. The hunters are probably able to do so well because they don't have to worry about demon attacks. Well, I hope you enjoy your return to Taliesin. Have fun! A town without demons. Hmm. Could be there's a Therian at the Earth Pulse Point in Eastgan that's devouring the malevolence. What do you think? That would certainly explain things. Good day! How are you liking Taliesin? I bet you're surprised not to see any exorcists. Yeah. I've never been to a town like this. The exorcists stationed in Eastgand often leave to help deal with problems in other parts of the world. Then again, few are stationed here to begin with. Are they on another of those expeditions now? That's right. They're currently in Northgand, helping put down a group of dangerous demons. Even though they're gone, we still have regular exorcist patrols stop by. We feel safe enough with them. Maybe they should just move the capital to East Gand. Of course, I know there's no way that would happen. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn! I forgot today was the day Nico was coming. I missed out on buying that special quiche. <sighs> That's too bad. I wish she'd just open up a shop here. You'd think it would be easier than always having to make the long trek from a ball. I heard she doesn't want to leave the village because she's waiting for her missing friend to return. What are you talking about? A ball's nothing but a ruin! What? Well, you're a morbid young woman. Sure, the place was hit pretty bad by a demon a few years ago, but it's not like it's abandoned. Many of the villagers were hurt, but thanks to Lord Artorius, nearly all of them survived in the end. That can't be... It certainly is. In fact, there's a girl from there, Nico, who comes here once a week to sell things. Just yesterday, my husband sent medicine to the general store there and got some juicy prickle bore meat in return. That can't be right. I... with my own hand, I... Velvet? Velvet said a ball was wiped off the map, but it sounds like someone's been coming from there with things to sell. Do you think a new group of settlers moved in? Apparently that merchant Nico is someone Velvet knows. She said something about Artorius having saved the village. Do you think it had something to do with the Earth Pulse Point? I can't say. We've heard too many conflicting things. This feels wrong to me. Really, really wrong. We won't find the truth by wandering blindly in the dark. The path forward is our only way. Right. It's not like we can turn back. But Miss Mogulu, what if there's darkness ahead too? Then we'll take a nice nap together. Forever, probably. Oh. What's going on? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> Me what this town's known for. Answer, stairs. Yeah, I've never seen this many stairs before in my life. You're close to the sea and the weather is beautiful and everything, but doesn't all this climbing make life here hard? Not at all. I've walked the stairs here since I was a child. A little climb like this is nothing. Everyone raised here has a strong set of legs and a sturdy back. You couldn't turn a profit selling back medicine here. No way, no how. Over in a ball sure was fun, wasn't it? It sure was. 
What a cheerful and happy place. And the food was amazing. I'd love to go back sometime. I loved the prickle boar meatballs. Nico's quiche was so good. It was a master quiche. This Nico must be a great cook. I'd love to try this master quiche. <laughs> Where did you learn a joke like that? Anyway, Taliesin's Fisherman Festival is coming up soon. We've got to show the folks from Abal a good time. Yeah, I'm gonna help my uncle catch lots of tasty fish for the festival. What do you think you'll catch? Uh, pickled mackerel, tuna rolls, oh, and duck stew. <laughs> Those are all the names of dishes, silly. And a duck isn't a fish, it's a bird. I swear, you don't think of anything but food. Nico's quiche. Just have to go there and see for ourselves. I wonder what Velvet's hometown is like. A ball? I've heard about it from other sailors, although that was a long time ago. They said it's a fairly plain place, and it's home to rustic, hospitable folk. That sounds like any country village to me. I wonder if Velvet used to be rustic and hospitable. Oh, you mean to say she's devious and rude now? N not at all. <laughs> it's okay, you can admit it. It's pretty much the truth. Well, I imagine she was a plain, hardworking girl. Hmm? You really believe that? Call it a guess, really. I bet she was a cheerful, loving sister. Maybe so. Hmm. And now she's the Lord of Calamity. If she sees her former friends, maybe she'll remember some of what she's lost. But what has she lost?
will need to be extremely wary. <laughs> Say, do you know why Velvet was sent to that prison island in the first place? It had to be to funnel the other prisoners' malevolence to a Nominot, right? There's an Earth Pulse point near a ball, right? Wouldn't it have been easier just to leave her there? Lack of food, probably. I heard she devoured the entire village. Could that rumor really be true? Who can say? Let's ask Aizen's coin. You know it doesn't work like that. All right, let's think. Why else would Artorius move Velvet to the island? If she was the first Therian he captured... 
He needed a guinea pig to test out what was written in the ancient book. Precisely. He made a special cage for her in the island prison, where Earth Pulse Point and Malevolence met. Then he used Velvet to test how Therians work. Huh. I could see him doing that. But turning his own family into an experiment. I'm just offering a theory. But a man willing to sacrifice his brother's life wouldn't likely show mercy to his sister either. How could he be capable of such things? Perhaps that's just how badly he wants to save this world. Or perhaps there's no other way it could be saved. Huh? Do you think there'll be ruins at this Earth Pulse Point, too? If you're expecting something like the undersea or underground temples we saw before, you might be setting yourself up for a disappointment. Have you been there before? No. But if there's any such kind of grand structure here, it wasn't recorded in the Abbey's archives. Eastgand has long been a frontier, and civilization here was never really developed. Plus, the land to the east is said to be unstable, making it hard to build anything too large there. Even if a temple had been built there, the shifting earth would likely have swallowed it without a trace. The warship of Inominat may be widespread now, but just a few years ago, Empyrean faith was all but dead. Right. Still, if you actually searched for the ruins, I bet you could come up with something incredible. We've seen underwater and underground temples, so why not a temple in the sky? A temple in the sky? It's a romantic thought, and the ancients were certainly advanced, but... Flying temples are a bit far-fetched, eh? <laughs> hey, that's the beauty of magic. Anything could happen. A flying temple, a beautiful woman being sawed in half. The border between dream and reality is as fine as a frog's hair. Maybe you just spend too much time daydreaming. Maybe. Hmm.
can't believe it. Is it really you? Uh, 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 Velvet? What is this? How are you alive? I could ask you the same question. Where have you been this whole time? You just up and disappeared! Everyone thinks that you were eaten by a demon! But I knew it couldn't be true. You're too strong to let some crummy demon take you down. You're alive. <laughs> I... I didn't mean to embarrass you in front of your friends. I have to let everyone know the good news! You finally come back to us! Nico's alive. She's alive. Don't let your guard down. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, naturally, we've got a Reaper with us. Let's head for a ball. We can ask everyone there exactly what happened. Yeah. Take a look at this. Eye of newt and mushroom spore, tender parts of prickle bore! <laughs> Show them how Ifreed's crew can sail. Velvet, I have to ask. Are you sure that the other villagers died that day? Well, it's... It's not like I had time to check. did when he killed Luffy. Velvet, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. I know I'm right. I'm sure of it. This isn't how the village should be. Well, let's stay calm and investigate. I am calm. I'm fine. Really. It didn't seem like that was someone else masquerading as this Nico girl. But if she's the real thing, then something very unnatural is going on. You get me, Rokuro? Yeah, we better keep an eye out.
I don't. I... I thought the whole village was wiped out that day. Yeah. It nearly was. But just when we thought it was all over, Arthur, Lord Artorius saved us! No, it was his doing in the first place. He sacrificed Lafayette. It really was a shame what happened to that poor boy. That's all you have to say? A shame? My brother Luffy died I'm that- I'm sorry. Truly, I am. But you can't lose hope, dear. He's right. What counts is that your brother's still alive. <laughs> He's... alive? He's... in your house. Don't worry, we've all pitched in to take care of him. I don't... Velvet... Velvet, let's go to your house and see. Yeah, okay. Luffy, Luffy's alive? What's wrong? Well, that didn't break it. Next time you suspect an illusory art, test out your theory on yourself. You think we're all seeing an illusion? It's possible. It wouldn't be the first time. But an entire village? That shouldn't be possible. Shouldn't be, no. How do we approach this? Try to break it apart at the seams somehow? No. For now, we and our enemies share the same goal. Come on, help me look for the Therian. Sure. I... think I'll stick with Velvet. I won't stop you. Keep a close eye on her. I don't think she's entirely right in the head at the moment. Yeah. My home... it hasn't changed a bit. We need to be careful, Velvet. Aizen thinks this could be a trap. You think Nico and everyone are being controlled? I don't know. It's just... You think it could be Melchior's doing. But even so... <sighs> <sighs> Not going to work on me. You're insane. People can fight against pain, but... I won't be deceived by this. You'll open your wound! <gasps> you're warm! Luffy, you're really alive! Luffy? He's been asleep ever since that day. I found him at the shrine, collapsed on the ground. His wounds healed, but he's never woken up. 
If he's still alive, that's all that matters. I'll find a way to wake you again, Luffy. I swear I will. We'll be together. I still have to thank you for this comb after all. So, that's where Velvet's comb came from. Did Lord Artorius really try to sacrifice such a defenseless child? What's wrong, Lafayette? You don't look like your usual perky self. I'm... I'm okay. I'm just glad Velvet's alright. What? Your name is Lafayette too? <laughs> what a weird coincidence! Uh, yeah. Hey. Sorry about all that, you guys. Don't worry about it. What are we going to do now? If it were me, I'd make Luffy said something he really likes for dinner tonight. He can handle soup. Maybe he'll notice the smell of your cooking and it'll wake him up. Yeah, maybe I should. Would you watch after him while I go buy what I need? Of course. I am at your beck and call. Is there anything I can do to help too? Yes, please. I'll need you to be my taste tester. I wonder if they've located the Therian. Let's... just leave that to them. You're not curious? Of course I am. But for right now, I want to stay close to Velvet. I've got a really bad feeling about this. Something more important than finding the Therian? Yeah. My stomach is twisted, and I've got a chill up my spine. I'm really scared. Very well. I trust your feelings. We'll leave the Therian to Rokuro and Aizen, and stay with Velvet then. Thanks, Eleanor. Magilu, what will you do? Whatever I feel like. <sighs> I shouldn't have asked. Thanks anyway, Magilu. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? In the end, whatever happens, happens. Wiser words never spoken, right? All right. First, I'm going to whip up my special quiche. And then I'll throw in tomato and egg soup and some pudding. I didn't even know your face had smile muscles. It's been a long time. Apologize? What for? That business with Arthur. Back then, I said he seemed like a fraud. I know you took it pretty hard. But if he wasn't there three years ago, our village would have been destroyed. I'm sorry I doubted him. I didn't trust him then either. I only realized how amazing of a person he was when he saved all of our lives. <sighs> I'm ashamed of myself. All this time we've been feeling terrible, thinking we may have driven you to leave the village. Please, forgive us. That's not... I, I didn't... Where have you been these past three years? It must have been tough living on your own, without any family to help you. <sighs> Sorry, you don't have to talk about it if it hurts. But if you ever feel like talking, we're here for you. I know we can't make up for all the pain we put you through, but if there's anything we can do, just ask. And if you'd like, you're always welcome to come back. The whole village would welcome you with open arms. Between the cold, the famine, and the demon blight, there were times I thought the world was done for. But, over the past three years, I've stopped worrying. I know we're overly reliant on Arthur and the Exorcists, but this village has changed. The Exorcists taught us that there are things the demons hate. We can't defeat them, but we can keep them away. It's peaceful now. 
The exorcists stop by on patrol every now and then, and we haven't had a case of demon blight since. What happened to your sister was horrible. But you and Laffy said should try to move on. Make the most of your lives. I hope he wakes up soon. I'm sure he will. Thank you. 
coming of the Malachim are a gift from the Empyreans, a reward for our repentance and our renewed prayers. The Malachim are our blades against the demons, and the exorcists the hands that wield them. Humanity's hope. You never change. Want me to take you home this time? No! Don't treat me like I'm senile! Ah, uh, okay. Oh! It's you, Velvet. Be careful when fighting Pricklebores. If they charge you, punch them in the nose, right? No! Throw sand in their eyes! Sand in the eyes. Got it. You finally started listening to me. You're 16. You've really grown. Yeah. 16? But aren't you 19? Leave her be. Velvet! It's been forever! Great to see you! You haven't changed a whit! What do you mean by that? <laughs> uh, have you seen Nico yet? I have. She's as full of life as she always was, right? Come to think of it, nothing's really changed much, has it? I suppose not. By the way, how are Orthy and Russ doing? Those pups haven't changed a whit either. They saw a guy with a big sword walking with a dour-eyed fellow in black. They freaked out and hightailed it. That would be Rokuro and Aizen. Those dogs are as cowardly as always. So, what part of Velvet hasn't changed a whit? Hmm. She doesn't have any makeup on? Uh-huh. Hey, could I get some eggs, milk, spinach, and tomatoes? And I'd love to know what cheese you'd recommend, too. You got it. And in celebration of your homecoming, I won't even charge. With you cooking up a feast like that, I'm sure Laffy Set will wake up straight away. Thanks. I really appreciate it. You're getting spinach? I can't really handle it myself. You'll never grow up strong if you don't eat your spinach, young lady. I've done just fine without it so far, thank you. <laughs> oh, if you insist, I'll leave it out just this once. Wow, Velvet. You must be special. Not many folks get to be friends with an exorcist. She's, She's not, not my, my friend. friend. <laughs> the way you two bicker, I find that hard to believe. Oh, yeah. Do you have any prickle bore? Oh, I'm sorry to say that I'm out at the moment. That's fine. I'll hunt some up myself in the tranquil woods. Just like old times. Actually, there haven't been any prickle bores there lately. You should try the Morgana Woods instead. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks for the tip. You don't like spinach, right, Eleanor? Well, you know, I just... All right, it's true, but keep that between us, okay? Velvet really seemed to be enjoying herself at the shop. Quite. And she can really pick out a nice balance of foods while making every gold count. She seems so cheerful and carefree. That's the real Velvet. I'm sure of it. Yes. An ordinary, dutiful, loving sister. I wish she could have stayed that way. She could have lived a happy life, surrounded by her friends. Just plain Velvet Crow, sister to Lord Artorius. Uh, and maybe not Lord Artorius, but just plain Arthur. A happy, ordinary life for an ordinary girl, with a kind family and supportive friends. Alrighty, to the Morgana Woods to hunt some prickle boars. Yeah, sure. We're looking for prickle bores. Keep your eyes on the thickets.
show you the beauty of my spear work. Point of I'm not one to go easy. This is hunting? <laughs> we keep this up and who knows how many we'll bring home. They were nothing. Okay, this should be enough. Um. Huh? What's wrong? Nothing. I just feel a little sorry for them is all. I hear you. These prickle boars might have all been family. People can be so heartless. Yeah, I'd forgotten this feeling. But what can you do? At the end of the day, we have to eat just as much as they do. Yes, what can you do in this situation indeed? Luffy's waiting for us. We should run on home now. Luffy.
Shopping, hunting, laughing with friends. That was how her life used to be, wasn't it? Yes, it reminds me of my own past. Huh? But wasn't your village... Uh, I'm sorry. It's not your fault. The happy times I shared with my family, I still treasure those memories. And even after the attack, I've still been able to find happiness. Eating a good meal, making new friends. And falling in love? Yes, falling in... Love? <gasps> Look what you made me say, Bianfu! There's nothing to be ashamed of. Most every girl's happiest memories are of her first love, after all. Don't you think there was someone special out there Velvet had feelings for? A first love? Do you really think so? That's enough of that talk, Bianfu. You sound like an old man. No! I'm only 150 years old and already being treated like an old man! <laughs> but still, I would like to meet the guy Velvet first fell for. I wouldn't. <laughs> I see. You're a guy. Heard the news about your brother. I'm happy for you. So, what's your plan now? You guys are snooping around the village. Yeah, we wanted to check out that shrine too, but we got stopped. Apparently, the Abbey's designated it off-limits. If there's a Therian around, it's probably there. I'm going to draw it out. If this is a trap, things may turn violent. Either way, this place is about to get a lot less tranquil. <sighs> the same as everywhere else I've been. You can quit here if you like, but I'm going to keep on fighting the Abbey. And if I try to stop you, you'll insist, I presume. Velvet, no! <laughs> I'll give you one day. Once you've made up your mind, come meet me at the Cape. I'm with him. How tomorrow shakes out depends on what you decide, Velvet. Your hand. It's. As you can see, I'm a demon. Three years ago, I was the one who attacked this village and. I don't want to hear it! Demon. Or no demon. You're still you! Okay, so. You're scary! I'll get used to it. I promise. I'll keep it a secret. Let's just live here in the village like we used to, okay? You, me, and everyone else. Nico. That was rather good, Velvet. Yeah. Luffy said gets a gold star for being such a good taste tester, too. Tomorrow, I'll fix you up a nice stew. Hey, is this... It's the original copy of the book on Inominat. And all the pages are here. 
velvet. Hey, Fee. Can I borrow your compass real quick? I'll give it right back. Please? Uh, all right. He really wanted a compass more than anything else. Just like you, he loved to stare out at the sea, wondering what's on the other side. He wanted to go adventuring someday. Oh, I didn't know that. I bet once he wakes up, you two will be really good friends. So, this is what your life used to be like before everything happened, huh? What's gotten into you? Hmm, maybe I made the pudding a little too sweet. <gasps> Velvet, how do you know what it tastes like? <sighs> I think I'll get myself some shut-eye. But what are you going to do about Tama- Mogilu, are there arts that let the caster manipulate dreams? Huh? Dreams? Why? There is, yes, an art that requires a certain type of Moloch. It envelops you in a fog and reads your regrets, then traps you in a happy dream. An art that reads your regrets and shows you happiness. I'm going to the Cape. Now? What on earth's gotten into you? Velvet. <gasps> Velvet! Don't go. Stay here. Stay with me. <sighs> this is Fee's compass. I'm sorry, Luffy. No, don't. Wait. Velvet, wait. Don't. Don't leave me here. Fog? Is this what Mogilu was talking about? We're going to the Cape Shrine. It's time to drag out the Therian. There you are. Velvet, you have to stop your friends. They keep saying they're going to the Cape, and they just won't listen. The Abbey's forbidden anyone from going inside. We'll all be punished if anyone breaks the rules. I hate to say it, Nico, but I think I'm a terrible person. I really thought I could have my old life back again. I could forget everything else. I tried to act like I was doing it for Luffy, but it was all for myself. But I can't forget. I shouldn't forget. Luffy is dead. He was murdered without even knowing why. I will never forgive that. Ever! So get out of my way. If you don't, I'll devour you again! Of it. Why? Why must you do that? There we go. The truth at last. You're right. Over my way. <laughs> I'll color me surprised. I didn't think you'd actually tough it out. What are you talking about? Focus on the monster, sweetie pie.
this way. The shrine's through these woods. Hey, mind telling me what the hell's going on? It's a trap. Trap, trap, trap. Our enemy spun an illusion based on Velvet's dreams. That's a nasty little art. But Velvet saw through it all? She did. But even if it's all a dream, such brutality on her part. Eh, Velvet's always been our brutal poodle. But to shake off the dream by herself, now that's something. The boundary between dreams and reality is demarcated solely by one's own heart. What? I'm saying she's wowie zowie cool beans. Come on, we gotta hurry. It was all a dream. Hell, even if it wasn't, I won't turn back! Woo! It's a big